What I find to be the most dangerous about what Nancy Pelosi did, and I said this in a tweet that I shared, which is that we're unwilling to recognize the limits of our power. And I think we really are coming to the end of a phase. And, and what the U.S. is unwilling to recognize is that we have a multipolar world now. And what we've seen with China, and I would, I would argue that this is a continuation of something that is really troubling that was unfolding between January and February before Russia invaded Ukraine, is, is that we, we, we do not have this willingness to show restraint and uh, we engage in these provocations. And when powers react in the way that you would expect that they would, we go, oh, we didn't do nothing. What are they doing? Like we act like it's, it came out of the blue that they are reacting to something, uh, even though all along there were warnings from experts that this would provoke uh, a response and that we would have to deal with it and that there would be consequences for our actions. But it just seems like Pelosi, I'd say the Biden White House, since they did nothing to stop Pelosi, even though the Pentagon, the people should know the Pentagon themselves said that this was a bad idea for Nancy Pelosi to get on a plane and go to Taiwan. And she did it anyway. And so uh, the Pentagon didn't stop her, even though they made this warning. The uh, Biden White House wouldn't get on a phone, wouldn't even make a phone call to Nancy Pelosi and tell her, don't go to Taiwan right now. That's a bad idea. And I, th this is alarming to me because there are so many things that can happen after uh, this moment. Uh, and, and we're starting to see them. But I'll, I'll stop here and then there's more I can share. But I'll let you get back into this. Yeah. Speaking with Kevin Costola, managing editor of Shadowproof, you know, it, it to me, there isn't much that I can say other than I, I just try to observe in a very reasonable, objective, you know, point of view. But the fact that you've got multiple Chinese warships surrounding the Taiwanese island, to me, says China's not messing around. And one thing China can do that Russia can't do is China can tank our economy. Yep. And if you think they can, you find out just how quickly all of Clinton's wonderful trade deals from NAFTA and normal trade relations with China can actually be brought to its knees if the Chinese communist government finally decides, yeah, we've had enough. We can stand on our own two feet. And there is nothing we can do because this is, again, at a time when our country is extremely vulnerable due to the inflation crisis. And the fact that we do have a president and an administration right now that really has no idea how to deal with all these things. So what are your thoughts about potentially, you know, just poking the bear? Uh, yeah. I, I almost wonder, what is Pelosi's motivation? Why wasn't there anybody telling her directly, this is not a good idea? We don't, we've, we're already way too knee deep in what's going on in Ukraine. Do we really want to get involved here with a country that can easily tip the balance of power ac across the globe? And so uh, this is antagonism. It's also agitation on the part of Nancy Pelosi and, uh, and Democrats and their support within the Republican Party. So I think it's certainly true that uh, I've seen the joke going around that people are not really sure how to think of this if they are of the red stripe because uh, they don't like Nancy Pelosi. So this is a nice time to join in a pile on, but they also don't like China. So which way are they supposed to go if they're a Republican? But that's trivial. I'll set that aside. There, Along with this trip, there was a bill that was marked up uh, by the Foreign Relations Committee, I believe, from everyone's favorite corrupt New Jersey senator, Bob Menendez. Mr. Menendez, Mr. Menendez, somehow still in office, somehow survived a corruption trial. And uh, then there's Lindsey Graham. And together, uh, Lindsey Graham and Menendez uh, have revealed or unveiled this Taiwan Policy Act. Uh, I just made a few notes here because I think this was important to, to get in here um, uh, because they've added that they're going to increase military support to Taiwan. So we're going to see more of what we've seen with Ukraine. And they always say it's just for defense. It's just, <laughs> it's just for defense. 
But what people should understand is we've had a policy of one China, and then under that one China policy, there's been two systems. So China makes their own policies. They, they govern their people in the mainland. Taiwan takes care of their own people. They function independently, but they're part of the Republic of China. And so it's been one China, two systems. This goes back to 1970s. And there's a, success, a secessionist movement in Taipei that says that uh, we don't want to do this anymore. We would like to be independent from China. And they've aligned with forces within the U.S. government. Uh, they have support within parts of U.S. intelligence agencies. They have support uh, within factions of the U.S. State Department. I think there's a big tussle going on between different schools of thought here. And they're trying to pull the U.S. in this direction of throwing their weight entirely behind this secessionist movement. The problem being is that it'll upend the status quo that has really kept things stable through that part of the world and I'd say the entire world for a number of decades. So this bill then proposes that they're going to expand the role for Taipei to be in international organizations. They want to make them some kind of like uh, unofficial member of NATO because that's what we do now whenever we want to uh, antagonize a country that we're challenging, we'll just make their neighbors a part of NATO. And then they want to outline uh, when Beijing would be sanctioned if they cross you know, wh whatever line. It's ambiguous, but it would basically force a uh, president, whether it's Biden or whoever is elected after he's no longer president, then someone would be required to impose sanctions on China, which of course then sets off the kind of responses that we've seen from the Russian government. It also sets off the kind of responses um, that, that we saw when Donald Trump was claiming that he could win a trade war, which is one of the most ridiculous, nonsensical things that we had to sit through. And it failed. It utterly failed. You know, he said he was going to create jobs. We lost 200 to 300,000 jobs. He said that, um, you know, he, he basically said that it was going to be something that would be great to you know, show China that we could withstand all of this. The costs of goods just escalated. China just raised their prices. So uh, it's, this is something that people need to consider. And what I'm troubled by is, you know, to me, I'm a realist, like, but not in the sense of like somebody who believes in the project of the United States and our, our, our quest to dominate and control all parts of the world. But I, I just, I, re I really and truly believe that whatever we do is going to invite a reaction. And, and, and so we ought to recognize that if we're going to do it, that those come with a set of consequences if we're gonna go down particular paths. But there's these idealists that increasingly dominate the, the, the Democratic Party um, people like Samantha Power, who believe in the, this doctrine of responsibility to protect, which is so so much bullshit because they don't always protect like every single country. Like, you can't go into every single country that would need the U.S. military or any kind of peacekeeping force to come in and save it. So very clearly, it's it's all about what the U.S. agenda is and who it wants to counter. And we've de we've determined that. The, the next era after the war on terrorism, the global war on terrorism, which is in its twilight years. I mean, we did drone strike Ayman Zawahiri this last, the, oh, this last week, but that's just sort of like a holdover of a, of a bygone era at this point. The real thing that's gonna define the next chapter of foreign policy is great power competition. And that's why they got into it with Russia. That's why we're, it seems like that's not good enough that they're going to do what military contractors and these, these you know, the weapons companies want. And they would like to be able to arm Taipei and invite conflict. And it just does seem like, you know, there used to be these red lines that would hold back what officials would do in U.S. government. And now that doesn't deter it. It doesn't discourage. It's, it's almost like, oh, there will be conflict and that's what we want because there will be opportunity, we'll be able to profit, 
There will be more uh, clarifying moments. Uh, we'll be able to challenge China. And China is going to react in a way that we, in our hubris, believe will turn off every power around it, whether it's South Korea, Japan, any of them. The, like, the countries in the region do a lot of business with China. We seem to have this idea that China is going to lash out at Taiwan, then it'll be alienated, we'll be able to isolate China, and then we'll be able to get those countries to come into our fold, we'll decouple from China, and then China will be in a worse position and we won't be the ones struggling. But I think that's 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 quite arrogant of us to believe that we could pull off something like that. Well, I find it interesting that in one little piece there, you said two very important words, which are hubris and arrogant. And, and that is the ultimate downfall of the empire. So, you know, we're watching it. But it, what's interesting is people look at this Nancy Pelosi thing like, oh, that's so provocative. Well, yeah, it is. But so is the fact that we have warships like lining, lining China and Russia all the time. Like people don't really understand that we're always provoking those countries. Always. We are waiting for one of them to do something defensive. We will claim it's offensive and that will be our manufacturer consent. So we yeah. sit there on their borders, egging them on all the time. So to me, the Nancy Pelosi thing is sort of like sort of the last straw potentially. Um, and just the total arrogance of her willingness to just go do that. This is up there with me as when Trump decided to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Yep. And this is one of those things where you're just going in completely tone deaf. You're not getting the situation and you're just doing what you're doing, thinking, I, I don't even know what, just total arrogance. And no one can touch her. I mean, she's just sitting there com committing insider trading openly and nobody does anything. So, you know, why are we surprised that she would go and instigate a fight with China? Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.